What exactly is a prism? Is a triangular glass prism a special kind of a prism? A triangular glass prism, to be specific, is a piece of glass that has two triangular and three rectangular faces. You can think of a prism as a triangular piece of glass carved from a white bottom glass slab. The rectangular faces in a triangular glass prism are known as refracting surfaces. The line along which the two refracting surfaces meet is known as the refracting edge of the prism. The angle between the two refracting surfaces, denoted by the capital letter A, is called the angle of the prism or the refracting angle. The base of the prism is the rectangular face of the prism that does not take part in refracting light. Consider XYZ, the cross section of a triangular glass prism. When a light ray PQ is incident on the face XY of the prism, it refracts at the two refracting surfaces of this prism and follows the path PQRS as shown. Now, a quick recap of the terms associated with refraction. The ray of light that is incident on a surface is called an incident ray. Therefore, PQ is the incident ray. Q is the point of incidence. The ray that deviates at the point of incidence due to a change in the medium is the refracted ray. In this case, the refracted ray is the ray that travels inside the prism between the two refracting surfaces. Thus, QR is the refracted ray. The refracted ray again incidence on the other surface of the prism and then emerges from it into the air. This light ray emerging from the prism after refraction is called the emergent ray. Here, RS is the emergent ray. Normal is the imaginary line drawn perpendicular to the surface at the point of incidence. The angle formed between the incident ray and the normal at the point of incidence is known as the angle of incidence. Thus, here, angle I1 is the angle of incidence on the face represented by XY. Similarly, angle R2 is the angle of incidence on the face represented by XZ. The angle between the normal and the refracted ray is known as the angle of refraction. In the absence of the glass prism, the incident light ray would follow the path PQ OQ dash. Due to the prism, the light ray emerges along the path ORS. Thus, the light ray deviates from its initial path. The angle between the directions of the incident ray and that of the emergent ray is called the angle of deviation and is represented by Greek letter delta or theta d or the English letter d. Here, angle Q dash OR is the angle of deviation. When the light ray PQ incidents at Q, on the face XY of the cross section XYZ of the prism. It refracts and propagates forward inside the prism. As the light ray passes from a rarer medium, which is air, to a denser medium, which is glass, it bends towards the normal. When this refracted ray incidents on the other face of the prism XZ at R, it refracts again and becomes the emergent ray RS. Here, the light ray refracts from a denser medium, which is glass, to a rarer medium, which is air. Hence, the light ray bends away from the normal. Thus, a light ray refracts twice as it propagates through a triangular glass prism. The emergent ray always propagates towards the base of the prism. In many optical instruments, Prisms are used to deflect and redirect the light without loss of intensity. Right-angled prisms are most commonly used for such applications. A right-angled prism whose critical angle is less than 45 degrees can be used to deflect light at a right angle.
light incident normally on side AB passes without deviation and incident on side AC at an angle 45 degrees. Since the angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle, the light is totally internally reflected and is deviated from its original path by 90 degrees. If light is incident normally on the side AC, it travels straight and hits side AB. Then, light is internally reflected twice at surface AB and BC and leaves the prism with a deviation of 180 degrees. In this case, the image of an object gets inverted. The same prism can also be used to obtain an inverted image of an object without changing its size. Prisms were used for those effects as well. That's where dispersion of light comes in. Light rays refracted through a prism disperse and give rise to very vibrant colors. Where do these colors come from? You'd be surprised to know that these are all constituents of white light. When a white light ray passes through a prism, it refracts and splits into its constituent colors in the process of refracting through the prism. The splitting of white light into its constituent colors is called dispersion of light. This is how you get the rainbow effect through the prism as well. Light disperses and creates a rainbow effect when it propagates and refracts in the prism. Can you see that strip of colors? Let's check out the order in which these colors appear from bottom to top. First is violet. Second is indigo. Next is blue. Then green. Yellow. Orange. And lastly red. The same colors as that in a rainbow. Right. When white light propagates through a prism, it refracts at an angle. However, the angle of refraction of each of constituent colors of light varies a little. This is because the frequency and hence the wavelength of each of the constituent colors of white light is different. This leads to a difference in the refractive index of the glass for each of the colors. The difference in refractive index leads to different angles of deviation for each of the colors when light is passed through the prism. This is how we obtain a band of different colors on the screen.